So welcome back. This is the last of the uh, weird non-Mendelian traits. This one is uh, separate and really crazy. We have a whole lab on it, so I put this video as separate. Today, children, we're talking about a polygenic traits. In the polygenic traits, this is where you have multiple different genes, multiple loci, that's the location of a gene, just you know, for those of you following along at home. Multiple genes controlling the trait, and so you could have two or more different alleles for each of these genes. And so like if you had a polygenic gene controlled by five different genes, you could have two, four, six, eight, ten different alleles that you could have, or even more, because polygenic, in addition to being dominant and recessive, could also be like co-dominant and incomplete dominant, and oh, uh, so crazy. Sex-linked? Sure, why not? Human height, for example, that's actually seven different genes controlling human height. Anytime you see any traits that have like this uh, gradient of possibilities, uh, anything with height in animals tends to be uh, polygenic. Just like in our pea plants though, being tall is actually dominant, sort of maybe one of the reasons why uh, each generation keeps getting taller than the last. Another good example are uh, coloration. You'll notice that there's a blending of colors of hair, uh, progressively darker or lighter all the way through like super platinum blonde to dark jet black hair. Again, there's a gradient of colors. In general, the darker colors are dominant to the lighter colors. So, you know, blonde would be super recessive and darker hair would be more dominant. But again, there's a, there's a mixing, there's a blending because it's a polygenic trait. So you have these multiple genes all controlling components of the trait. And so these are the reasons why when we mapped out the human genome, we found that things are so much more complicated than we thought before. Uh, there's a lab to do, and we'll cut to that now. You need to have at least one other person so that you can do polygenic traits lab. And again, we're going to get all the class results in here eventually. Otherwise, you're just going to be flipping coins like crazy. So since these are showing, you know, human height, there's different uh, gradations. There's a blended. You have tall people all the way down to shorter, 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 and then some really tall people. And so these are polygenic. Human height is actually uh, like six different alleles. So we're going to represent these six different alleles being either po uh, dominant or recessive using a coins. And by coins, it'll probably be the red and yellow bingo markers because coins are actually worth money and bingo markers are not, which means I have them. All right, so you're going to go through this. This tells you, you know, what combination of the traits give you different types of height. Uh, some background questions to answer. Then you're just going to follow this. You're going to flip all the coins. I like to put them in like a big like thing in my hand and go like rah, and then throw them out on the table. But you could also use like a cup and go like rah, and then throw them out on the table. And just record the number of tails, the number of heads, which will record as tall and short alleles. And then down here, you use the different genetic combinations, little t's for short, big t's for tall, and these give you the different possible heights you will fill in the heights. Once we get our class data, you will fill in the class data over in here, and that's going to give us, you know, some good descriptive data. So then on the back side, you can make yourself uh, a nice little graphy poo showing, you know, why most people tend to be kind of like in the middle. So, yep, that's a polygenic traits lab. That's the video. Thanks for watching it.